We're going to talk about scaling challenges. Keith, if you ever want to know where your business or is broke, go away for a week. Yeah, I, I, heard, I heard that does wonders uh, yeah. for your company. Let's talk about it. it does do you? Uh, so, so for for context, how many years are you in? Ooh, <laughs> technically, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> yeah, like doing this fifteen years, but integrated as integrated, I'm going. I'm in my fourth year, or th yeah, fourth year. Cool. Okay. So not 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 on the road to like easy uh, success. Still, still working the business. So. Yes. Um, but you're not you're not starting out either, right? So I'd say no. you're you're uh, coming up on no man's land where you do that jump from 50, 10 to 20, 30 million. Yeah, that's cool. that's where I'm at right so now. I'm probably a little under. I'm way under those, but let's just say I'm starting with a seven figure company trying to get to eight. Cool. Right. And yeah. so I went away for a week. I went out of the country. And. It was great to get away. Now I'm playing catch up and I'm realizing what systems and processes, because I was out for a week, failed and how they failed, yep. right? which is important because most entrepreneurs never give themselves that gift of going away somewhere and figuring out what went wrong after the fact. Okay. And so combination of things, but the easiest way to look at this is my I, we did not adjust the marketing down we should have adjusted marketing down and i needed more people here to take care of a lot of the things and my right hand person went away the same time half a week overlap as i did and that created a major almost all of the unexpected issues 100 percent, right but if i if i never did that and that never happened I wouldn't have realized where where we failed, and now I can go back in and make all the necessary changes. So I'll tell you this. If you're an operator that is seasoned and has gone away, I f could tell you, make sure that you let your people handle everything like I did. You'll see where things needed to get fixed. The other thing is, if you are going somewhere, there are ways to set up. So day one, if you plan on checking in with the business, the first thing you should be worried about is your actual setup, right? I didn't do that this time because I put basically put my phone away intentionally. And um, I'm happy I did, to be honest with you. Do you, you ever done that? For it. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm paying for it for sure. For sure. You know? Well, so let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about scaling at its most, uh, center point um, and really talk how not everyone's going to have the opportunity to leave for a week or three days Correct. or a day. Uh, most everybody wants to scale their business. Most people want to scale it way too quick, too soon mm -hmm. uh, without having some baseline. So let's talk about the baseline. What, are, what do people need to be thinking about in order to scale? Good. Um, Obviously, we've talked at length about time block studies here, um, but that is a great spot to figure out where you can delegate some. And I'll, here's what I'll tell you. And this, this led into my next action before I answer that question. My next action was I have three VAs I have to hire today to make my outfit that much more efficient. So nothing, nothing gets missed. And so, so that's what I'm your business. Your correction is to hire three new, three new VAs that can <clears throat> take the uh, overflow away. Yep. Okay. So which which means they're on demand. A lot of people don't understand that. Like having VAs and having a VA set, you just get them ready for the work. Doesn't mean they're working until you actually give them the task to do. Right. right? But I want to get them out and moving to bolster my content machine or bolster um, <clears throat> my marketing efforts, right? And if I can do that, that takes a lot off my plate where I can then divert attention to hiring, to training, to sales, right? Yeah. And 
that's what it is. Being a being a CEO is constantly or president or leader. It's constantly a balancing act. You know, you're looking at which department and maybe the person listening to this doesn't even have that yet. But at some point, if they stick with it, they will. And so what you're constantly trying to do is go into your company department by department and figuring out, hey, what can I do to improve this? Where do they need help? And doing that systematically, almost on a, let's say, monthly or quarterly basis. And that has helped tremendously. And that's kind of where we're at right now is I need to increase marketing efficiency and bring on more sales. Can't do, if I work to do both at the same time, I'm not going to do either one well. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. What about you? That, What's your that thoughts? That fixes on this? you, right? That fixes yeah. your issue for you to go take another vacation? No. Nah. No. No. It'll be a, it'll, it'll be a minute. Yeah. But so I think most people, like when we're talking about scaling, most people want to do it right out of the gate, right? Because they believe, I think the facade in business ownership is the more employees I have, the bigger my company is, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but in order to really scale, you have to be positioned with the foundation or else the business collapses anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. So the foundation, a couple of things to think through as you're looking to scale is, do you have enough work to delegate to another individual to pay a, yes. so that's where your time block study came into play, right? Do a time block study, see what, what all your minuscule items are that you're doing during the day. And then mm -hmm. you know, is that something you can pay someone else to do? So cool. we got that. Uh, and then we have finances, right? So fuck, dude, I can't tell you. I mean, I'm, you're in finance too. It's insane how many people we see who are in business operating with payroll who have zero mm -hmm. clue as to what their finances truly are in the business, like what they're mm -hmm. making, what, what their profit, what they're spending on things. So I'd, I'd say the second component is like, just learn your balance sheet and P&L. Yeah. And uh, then once you learn that, which should, shouldn't take you too long, a week, a couple hours, yeah. you know, a couple minutes a day for a week, that's when you can really justify like, a, I can afford to pay someone, and B, I have enough work to give to that person. Yeah. Those are the two check boxes. And, and there's also a really cool, I forgot who did the study, but it's revenue per employee, okay? And it's based on industry. So there is a company or team out there that can basically look at revenue by employee and let you kind of know where you're at based on the industry, right? And so one of the other things that I look at I mean, I look at our revenue per employee, not that, and I'm just telling you, that is not a metric alone, right? On, hey, right. I can hire people or not hire. You, you yeah. need to understand. Wrong metric. Yeah, you need to understand the financial implications of that position and what you're hiring. Yeah. Obviously. Um, but I will tell you that our revenue per employee is insanely high. And I, I know when we're at capacity, right? And so yeah. we are, we've been over capacity for a while we've held here and now it's all right what do i need to do to fix it and it's get those vas in so we can actually approach this much much more uh, effectively yeah for you mathematicians that want to know revenue uh by employee or per employee is total revenue taken in divided by total number of employees there you go so let's let's do let's do this really easy if I have $2 million in revenue on a yearly basis and 20 employees, right, it's 100K in revenue per employee, okay? So then when you do the math, that's, pre, that's a pretty high number, okay? But then you have to figure out, out of those people I have, right, how many of them are revenue producers, right? Because the right. revenue producers are always paid more, right? Sales is always going to be paid more. Uh, and then which are sales support? Okay, so sales support processing, sales support uh, operations. I would even go as, as in marketing, right? Right. Because marketing is not sales. Marketing brings people in, sales closes them. Right. All right. So you, you want to go through that and see where you're paying and what's the average salary per position. And that's that's somewhat of a useful guideline. I wouldn't say I would make any decision on that. I would just review it to see where you're at. You know, the, the other thing that I look at is what, what's the capacity of the team, right? If, I'm, if you're sitting there and you have 
a ton of capacity, meaning things you assign somebody something very quickly, it gets done right away. Well, you know, they have extra capacity, right? You don't hire a VA, but if you're asking for things and they're taking two or three weeks and you know, that person is diligently working. Well, guess what? That's an overcapacity issue. That means you have to hire and you have to hire immediately. Yep. It's one of the things that I think I pay attention to the most actually is, uh, is bandwidth per employee based on revenue and based on KPIs. Yeah. Right. Uh, and when I found that out, the employee shuffle slowed down tremendously because people, people weren't leaving because they were overworked. Mm-hmm. People weren't bored and just bullshitting. So they didn't get fired. It was the perfect sweet spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So not to say I didn't have to fire people for being idiots, but it, it, wasn't, it, from a, it wasn't from a capacity perspective. Yeah. So I guess people want the mechanics of scaling, right? We're talking about the ins and outs as an operator. So let's, let's go into some of the things that trip people up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I Marketing. think uh, I run into a lot is that people don't know how to hire. Yeah. A. Uh, they have no idea what questions to ask, what, any of that. Uh, so they either get misled to a hiring company that bamboozles the shit out of them for money mm-hmm. or they trial and error, right? Drink it through a fire hose on something like Indeed uh, where they get a million applicants a week. So I think that's that's the first thing that trips people up. Um, the second thing is, is lack of training. People don't know how to train for the position in which they're hiring for. I agree. Right? There's no process created around any of that. Uh, and so those are those are two or and or three. You could really use processes as, as its own. Uh, those are the main ones that we run into quite, quite often, actually. Yeah. It, you know what's crazy? I'm glad you brought that up. People think that marketing, when you're growing, right, you can grow sales you can grow marketing. The reality is you usually are going to have to grow them in lockstep. Okay. What I mean by that is if you hire on sales and you don't know your, your marketing numbers, okay. You don't know what your average lead cost is, your cost per acquisition. Okay. You don't know how much you're spending. There's no way for you to actually dial in when and where you should hire. Right. Because these are all metrics that if you don't know, okay. You could be hiring people, you could be growing that top line number, but if you're losing money because you did the math wrong, then all you're doing is digging the hole faster, right? Right. Okay, and so what people need to realize is, hey, marketing brings in leads, which your sales guys close, okay? You need to be able to feed any sales guy whatever that daily number of leads they can handle for us, we know it's usually around five to seven, anything more than that. And people are going to get missed. All right. So that's another thing that you can check and also check in with your team, right? You might be thinking, Oh, this guy's overworked and he's sitting there saying, Hey, I have more capacity. Or you might think somebody is at capacity, you know, is at capacity and they're on like underworked. I know I, flip-flop that but whatever you get my point yeah you're from boston everyone gets your point <laughs> well done <laughs> well played uh, <laughs> no i mean it's you know you know, scaling's not easy but it's it's i think it's the uh the, the most exciting part of the business too if you can just be i think that the key is just to be patient uh with all of it right don't say yes to. I mean, I remember back like first couple companies that I was building. Uh, I would say yes to the p- people for the dumbest shit. Oh man, he was cool. Yes, yeah, let's bring him on. Yep. Or you know, yeah, he was super laid back and used the word dude. Yeah, bring him on. Uh, you know, and and ultimately they they filled a void, right, for the moment, but they created more voids than they filled, leaving. Correct. Um, so. You know, it's not that you you can't you can't get a beneficial thing out of a little wrong hire. You just need to know if you can be patient on the front side and and not say yes so quickly. 
uh, yeah. you'll hire you'll hire better and, and you'll you'll consume the shit sandwich a little faster than most. You know? Hire slow, fire fast. Yeah, that's the same. Right? And uh, you know it's funny we we literally are starting a new class for sales, right? So one of those things when I went away was I have my sales manager. I said, listen, I want you to bring in uh, three to five people to start August 15th. Okay. Checked in with them today. We got one. Okay. I told him, move it back. Okay. He's like, well, aren't you upset that we didn't get everybody we needed? I said, listen, it doesn't matter what happened the past week. It matters where we where we are today. I'd rather you take the time, hire the right people. And even if we only have two, okay, or three, I'd rather start with two or three because it's easier to build from there. And as long as those two work out, you don't know who they could call. Maybe they have some friends where they were and they love it, right? And then you get a higher quality person. Why? Because it's a referral. It's not yeah, someone it's that came through Indeed or Wise Hire, right? right? And that... I'm glad I made that decision because two or three years ago, to your point, I would have just said, well, get them in here. I don't care how, how we right. film them. Okay. Yep. And here's what happens. That's, that's a normal thing for a business owner to do. All right. And you're saying be patient. I'm saying have aggressive patience like Andy does. Right. Aggressive patience is, all right, this sucks. But I know that if I hire three people from a shit pool, that it's just going to create problems. Maybe I get one of them, but I'm going to fire two pretty soon. Get the right three, run with them, and even if two stick, right, that's still better than the other way, right? Quality over quantity. And if you can be selective like that as you're trying to grow and scale, you will not run into the amount of issues you would if you were just not being patient and just fucking doing the thing to do the thing, which so many business owners do. Yep. Right? Yep. Think about like it. it. If you're trying to hire somebody to do a job, if they can't do the job and you hire them anyway, whose fault is that? Is that your fault or their fault? It's your fault, right? So avoid that mistake and wait till you find the right people that you're, you don't, you're never going to be sure on a hire. I don't think I've ever been sure of one single hire I've made, all right? I've been yeah. sure of every fire I've made, but I haven't been sure of every hire I made. And you're never going to feel that way as an operator. No, you shouldn't. No. You got personality disorder and get along with way too many people if that's the case. Correct. You start exactly. hating some people. <laughs> yeah, there's some big yeah. there's some bigger issues there. Yeah. Uh, uh, what what right. are other so, huh? What are other issues that you've run into scaling? Um people not being ready uh from a from a tech side of the world, right? They don't have operations built out. They don't have processes, KPIs, SAPs, training manuals. Fuck. I mean, dude, there's sometimes clients that we work with don't even have an employee handbook to give it. That's like the law, you know? Uh, yeah. So these are all things that I think a lot of people don't think about because referring to the smaller companies making their first couple hires, right? They're not thinking about the employee handbook and the legal pieces of the puzzle that they're supposed to give out. They're not thinking of written SOPs and having them accessible, you know, to your employee KPIs, you know, delivered to your employees so your employee knows what to track. You know, there's no employee onboarding type things. These are all pieces of the puzzle that, that we, when we run across it, people are having issues scaling. It's because there's one or more of those pieces missing. Yep. Yep. I mean, listen, here's the everything we're going over is pretty basic, <clears throat> but if you don't have training for every position and every role in your company, both written and video, it's going to be a lot harder. So if you build all that stuff, maybe not up front, but <clears throat> oh, dude, you, you can build it as once you, you can. Yeah. Yeah. And then and, and then review it once a year. You're golden. Well, here's the biggest thing, man, I can tell people. When I learned this hack, it saved me a shit ton of money and time. If I'm doing anything for the first time, I'll record myself doing it into script and I'll talk myself through it. Mm -hmm. Then I'll take that transcript in the chat GPT, clean it up, 
then I'll take that cleaned up version of the transcript and create a SOP out of it. And then I have the video already of me talking to myself through it step by step. So the visual SOP is already done. So I just I clean that. up the transcript and the script. We, we implemented that across the entire company. Yeah. So if you're part of marketing team and you're doing something that you're have never done before, you're going to make Amazing. an SOP. You're going to make a video. You're going to make the training. We upload it immediately. It's, it's there. And it's, dude, it was a night and day difference. Yeah. Night and day. Brother, I believe it. We did it and it makes everything easier. So guys, you guys heard it here. These are some of the issues that you'll run into scaling. Not all of them, but these are some of them. And these are some ones that are pretty easy to fix. Onboarding, training, hiring, marketing, making sure you approach things one at a time, division by division. These are things that'll help. And if you do have the opportunity to go away on a vacation for a week and you want to ice your phone, I highly recommend that you do because it will show you a lot of things, uh, a lot of weaknesses in the business. And I'm not saying that, like, I think my team did a great job, honestly. Like, there were some things that were tough that need to be addressed. Now they're getting addressed and uh, my company will be stronger and better for it. And every single person listening can do the exact same thing. It's good cool. shit. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.